In the decade leading up to Stephen Platt coming onto the comic book scene, entertainment was being birthed out of competition. There were these great rivalries between Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger, between Metallica and Megadeth, between Nintendo and Sega, and even in the sort of the real world, there was the USA versus the Soviet Union during the Cold War. But in the comic book world, we saw rivalries between Tom McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, and out of all that is birthed Stephen Platt. Hey everybody and welcome back to Luke's Power Out for our second episode on Stephen Platt. So let's get right into it. We're going to be looking at two things today. We're going to be looking at uh, muscles and how he draws muscles because last week we looked at how he renders his muscles, how he does the shading work like you see here. Specifically, I'm going to look at the way he draws his muscles but then, more so, I'm going to jump over to looking at how he does his posing, how he poses his characters. Particularly, we're going to be looking at Prophet, how he poses Prophet. Um, but just to see how he takes all that musculature and shapes it to tell his story. In the arms, he always has broad deltoids, broad shoulders. Now, just, just one more point. If you want to draw like Stephen Platt, you need to go and look at bodybuilders. Okay, because Stephen Platt is a master of drawing the bodybuilding type physique. Okay, um, you know, go find a book like Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. A book like that is, is a goldmine to understand how to draw superhuman type characters like Stephen Platt draws. All right, so just a little note there. Getting a resource like that would be a good idea. But Stephen usually draws like this. He'll draw a very broad, as you can see there, sort of deltoid, and he'll, he'll show all the components, right? The different heads of the muscle. And then he'll go into probably more of a teardrop sort of shape. Bit of a circular, this in here is like a, Inner bicep, outer bicep, depends on what your perspective is. But it's part of the bicep technically. There comes the bicep down there. And then he will draw this forearm muscle coming down like that. Uh, the elbow comes down here. And then he usually on profit, he'll draw quite significant forearms that taper into a narrow wrist. But you can see there, that's the fundamental building block. Now, when he drew Moon Knight, he actually didn't draw a lot of this central muscle here. He would kind of, if I can show you, let's get rid of this for a second. He would draw it more like this, with that forearm coming up, and then kind of have it a bit like that. Um, some artists will do that. Some artists may even do that, and then give a little bit of a, a muscle up there to. To demonstrate the, the front deltoid coming down, that mid deltoid coming down. But the main thing to focus on is see how this is an array of shapes. So I'll just change over to red. So you have here is like a teardrop or an ellipse sort of shape. Back here is similar but a bit tape it off, you don't have that point at the end. That's just a repeat of the same there. Then you're into more of that ellipse teardrop shape again. The bicep follows the same. You're following a similar look down there. See how that all locks in? That locks in. Uh, that would probably go up, up there and then come down like that. There's the elbow. You see how all of that locks in there like that? Once you get your head around this, learning the rendering from last week is going to be a lot easier to apply because it's not just his rendering that uh, makes his artwork look good, it's the form. It's the way he draws the muscle, like you can see up here, sort of this 
hunchback sort of look you've got going, that all adds to it. So here is a basic form of how he would draw an arm. Let's look at how he might draw a chest. Here's one of Moon Knight. Uh, you can see the way he draws a chest, that the delta which I have circled here leads into the peck. Okay, A lot of comic book artists do not draw that way. Todd McFarlane does. Um, I think Greg Capullo does. Uh, and definitely Stephen Platt does. So have your shoulder like that coming in and then your peck comes in like that. There's your arm over there. There's your other chest muscle there. Your other arms over there. Now at the front part here, you would have the first part of the rib cage, of which we all know Jim Lee is very well known for that very pronounced rib cage. Then we would have your abs like that. And that's sort of just meant to come around like that a little bit. And then you have these what I'll call serratus muscles. I think they are serratus muscles. And that leads up under here. And then you have the pecs, the pecs, the lats, I should say. It's late here, getting tired. And that tapers down into your waist muscles, which your abs fit into. And over here, you would have that muscle there. There's your arm coming down. And over here, you might have a bicep like that. And then, obviously, there is a hand like that with a fist. Very rough. Where's the head? There's the head. There's the neck. And there is the traps. Now, I would probably taper this waist a little bit more. Fix this rib cage up a little bit. And this arm is a little bit too small. See there, you can start to see the building blocks of the way he put a chest together. You have a few little just this just sort, of, sort of thing like that and he would render just like that shows part of the leg as well so it's a good exercise to look at how he draws legs he kind of goes between drawing mus leg muscles uh, separated and then also uh, very much as a whole. So for example, you could draw a leg like this, comes down to the knee, goes off like that, goes off like that, he's doing that, knee down there. And then you could do what he's done there Right, for ease, let's just do this. And then you can start doing things like that. However, he's rendering that section there, and then the underlining underneath. Okay. And then obviously here, you would probably just go like this. Get the eraser, and just start doing 
this and then go back and draw in some things like that. Etc. like that, and obviously he has more coming down underneath the knee. There's a whole section there. Like that, right? And you sort of got, it's hard to see in the drawing, but you've got an association that might be another muscle there. Got some stuff going on there. We'll, and by the way, if you're wondering what these are, these are he's wearing a pair of pants. So these are all stretch points in the pants. Okay. Like that, right? So that's when you draw a muscle. It's kind of like a hole, right? It's kind of like we started off with a hole shape. And then we added in little bits and pieces here very roughly, okay? Other times when he draws, he'll, it looks like he does this, all right? So there's your main central muscle in your quad, your leg at the front, all right? Then he draws a knee, so this. Then of course, you do your shin bone, all right? Inside there, like that. Okay. So other times it looks more like that. Now we're going to look at some posing that Stephen does. What you're seeing now, this is a character called Kirby from Prophet. It's, it's best described as a sitting pose. It's as if his characters were sitting on an imaginary chair that you can't see whilst they're firing their weapons or just looking cool, which always happened when Stephen drew something. So here's one of Kirby. There you go again. There's another pose of like a sitting sort of pose. You notice how they kind of lean back into their weapons, which makes their weapons look heavy, which actually makes them look more amazing when they're firing. There's a female character from Prophet who is kind of doing the same sort of pose. She's standing up. She's kind of got the legs in a sitting sort of position, although her body is twisted in a different way. There you go. There's another one. That looks awesome, I think. See, those guns look like they're more powerful than ever because of that pose. There you go again. He's really sitting down, looks like he's having a seat. And so effectively, I think that's enough. I think I made my point. Um, let's look at this. What we're seeing is if we take this sort of torso here, sorry, this sort of, uh, what do you call this? Belt region, groin region sort of thing. The character is kind of doing this. Move that to the side. Maybe it's like this. And then you've kind of got the chest there, maybe a shoulder muscle. But all you're getting over here is a hand, right? A hand usually on a trigger. And then there's some ginormous weapon, right? With, you know. 10 magazines hanging out of it. Like that sort of thing. And then over here, you'll have the same thing, a bit more of an arm maybe, like that. And then he's also got this, you know, some triple barreled monster of a thing shooting and he's doing, he's doing this sort of stuff, right? You notice this?
feet are somewhat like that. And, you know, it's firing away and there's a thousand shells, which I'm not going to draw. So you see that there? It's sort of like that's, that's the general gist of what he's doing. He's doing this kind of squatting seated pose and then getting rid of a lot of the arm and just having a hand holding the gun to make the gun look more effective. If we, if we look at, in particular, this one here, for example, he's got an arm in the air and you can just see a hand. You see his torso. There's no arm, right? There's a gun. There's the gun, okay? The other arm is pointing upwards, pushing some dude up in the air or something. And his legs are obviously down here. But the main point of this is to demonstrate he puts weight into his characters. Okay? He puts weight into his characters. Too many artists do this. He's a superhero. Right? Very quick. There's a superhero. No, it's not bad as a layout, I guess. You fix it up to make it look better, obviously. But does that character look like it has much weight? Does it look like it's actually being affected by gravity? No, but if you do something like this, That's, that's about as simple as like a thumbnail sketch as you can get, but how much more weight does that character have? How much more do you think that character is holding something that's heavy? How much more does it look like that character is being impacted by gravity? And that's why that pose that Stephen showed is so important because it actually makes you believe you're looking at a very heavy character who is holding very heavy weapons. As far as other poses, there's a dynamic pose that he does, that Rob Liefeld often does, is looking similar to this, where they have, so that weight he has in the character there, there's the arm, but look where the arm's going. The arm is going between the legs, right? So the character, and you see he bends the, I mean, he's amazing sort of McFarlane-like the way he does things, the way he bends anatomy. He's a big McFarlane fan, as am I. He puts that hand behind, between the legs there, and then has the other hand break out into a sort of a dynamic pose like that. You see that? 
and in other cases he may do this where I yeah, got my hand like that, and maybe, and then you've got that sort of sitting pose again. And Rob's very famous for doing stuff like that, Rob Liefeld. So Stephen is kind of doing a dynamic pose like that. Looks like he's doing bicep curls. Concentration curls, actually, for those of you who know what they are. Let's give him some, let's give him some dumbbells to do. Right, so he's sort of got, they would have gone that way, I think. So there's this idea that instead of just having a character stand around and be boring like that one I showed you before, that you can actually create dynamic posing just so something is a little bit more interesting. It's not enough to know how to render like Stephen Platt. You need to know the dynamics of his posing. You need to understand a bodybuilder's styled musculature. And putting all that together, along with some other elements we'll talk about in the next episode, are going to help you to draw more like Stephen Platt. Okay, so that's all for this episode. Hope that's been helpful. I will see you next Friday. Please subscribe. Thanks for being here. All the best.